Hello everybody, I'm starting my podcast now. I'm trying not to make it a big deal because I just want to get the first episode over with and I know the first episode is always the hardest. So, I'm just going to get started. So, we're going to talk about Fruits of Friday, episode number 7, giving up something for the sake of Allah. Now, before I start, I really want to talk about Fruits of Friday in general and what it means to me. And I discussed this on my Instagram story. And Fruits of Friday to me is where I share bits of wisdom that I've learned along the way because my mom is actually a very wise person. She's very humble about it. And she just gives me these bits of knowledge along the way all the time. And when I hear them, I can't help but to tell people about it. Even if it's from my own religion, like there's this love that I have for the words that for the words that she says and for the thoughts that she plants in my head that it feels like I am really depriving the world if not sharing the message with the world that she is giving to me. And that's why I wanted to start Fruits of Fridays because I didn't want to keep this knowledge to myself. I didn't want to keep these bits of wisdom to myself, especially not from non-Muslims. I think, you know, with Islamic content, with content that is regarding dawah, or stuff like that it's always towards Muslims it's never towards non-Muslims and I know that's a bit weird it's like dawah is supposed to be specifically you know to strengthen Muslims not necessarily but most in most cases but you know I seldom see content that looks at strengthening non-Muslims because it's, it's like the end goal is not to convert them because that's not in our hands. The end goal is to kind of show them, is to open their hearts, you know? Um, and then through that, well, the rest is history. But yeah, it's just, it feels like not sharing these bits of wisdom from Islam to non-Muslim people is doing very much harm to the world. I think it's doing harm to the world by not sharing these bits of wisdom. So, getting started. <laughs> okay, so giving something up for the sake of Allah. So what inspired me to do this episode was that I recently gave something up for the sake of Allah four months ago. And it's been something that I'm really, really struggling with up till now, actually. I think we think that when we give something up, we don't look back. But no, I think when we give something up, we do tend to look back and reminisce over the days that we indulged in that thing. For those wondering, I recently gave up music. Uh, Music was one of my biggest weaknesses and I think is still one of my biggest weaknesses. I'm not saying my only weakness, but it was a big weakness to me because it was something that is so intertwined in my life and was so intertwined in my life. It was hard to separate myself from it because the amount of pleasure that I derived from music you know, from the beats and the instruments and the lyrics and the rhythm, just everything about music, it was, to me, it was like drugs. (laughs) I'll be honest, like that's going a little bit far, but it's true. To me, music was that kind of stimulant. Um, And recently having gotten into bodybuilding and weightlifting, music is a big culture in in that bigger culture. Uh, And it's, you know, being like hardcore and stuff like that like just using music to basically fuel you you know especially during training and everything like music is a big part of that and i used it and i was actually getting into hard style before i quit i was getting more and more into hard style it's like this rabbit hole that you fall down into and i just remember making like the sickest playlists and I would look forward to the gym because of the playlists that I made. I would go to the gym and train for three hours every single day because there was music, because I knew that I would have that, you know, release of stimulants in my ear uh, for for the three hours that I gave every single day. And... I will be honest, I couldn't imagine my life without it. I couldn't imagine my life without music. And actually just talking about it right now, it's like, it's genuinely sparking up those memories again. Those memories where I used to listen to music. 
And when I say it, it was a drug, I, I mean that in the way that it was like addictive. And to some, I mean, <laughs> I get how this may seem a little bit, I don't know, like kind of petty. It's like a petty problem to have. Like there are bigger problems in the world. I get that. I understand 100%. But coming from the Muslim struggle perspective, um, t to you, like as a Muslim, I think there's always a problem to fix, no matter how small. And to me, music was one of them, even though it's genuinely, I don't think it's that small of a problem. I think it's actually very widespread and it's a bigger problem than it seems. And then it's just gotten so normalized. And I don't know. And, and it's, it's causing much, much more harm than good. This is not like, this is not supposed to be about music. It's supposed to be about how addictive music was for me. It was basically my drug. It was a thing that I wasn't willing to give up. I'll be honest. Um, if someone had went back to me at that time, which was four months ago, it wasn't that long ago. It was actually, at that time, I was still making Fruits of Friday videos. I, I was still trying to give dawah. It, like it wasn't years ago, right? It was four months ago. But if someone came to me back then and would have been like, would you give up music? I would be like, never, I would never give up music. I like, cause, cause I was so embedded into that culture. And it felt like without music, I couldn't perform the same. And that's where, that's what I really wanted to talk about is like, when you're dependent on something like that, to that extent, it can be life damaging. And that's exaggerative, but it's also true. Because being dependent on something like that, one day it's gonna be gone. And one day, you know, you're not gonna have access to it. Or one day it's just not gonna hit the same. One day it's not gonna be the same. And that dependency is still gonna be there. So you're dependent on something that's not willing to give back. You're dependent on something that's not guaranteed to give you the peace and to give you the boost that you want. And I realized that because one day when I went to the gym, I forgot my headphones at home. Um, and I, when I forgot my headphones, I like instinctually, I immediately knew inside my head, I was like, this is gonna be one of the worst training days of my life. I mean, can you imagine? I just lost, I just forgot my headphones at home. That's it, that's all. And, and immediately, like the dependency was unbelievable. It was surreal. I immediately went, this is gonna be one of the worst days of my life because of how dependent I was on that music, you know? And I mean, come on, gym music, <laughs> it's absolutely terrible. Um, but yeah, that's just something that I was Im extremely, extremely addicted to. I was extremely addicted to music. Now, when I cut it off, of course, whenever you try and make a big decision in your life to cut something off or to make a big change, to make a change that you know will affect you inevitably, there's always a high that comes with it. So in the beginning, when I cut it, it was, I was excited, you know? I was really, I felt like there was going to be a journey in front of me that would be exciting to embark on. And making those steps, kind of like deciding, the day that I decided, that like I just wanted to cut it off. I actually don't really remember what I was doing. I think I was just like, I was getting closer and closer to my deen, alhamdulillah. And I recognize that. I see that as I'm progressing in the dawah scene, then it's like, I don't even give dawah, right? Like dawah is supposed to be from a more experienced person, but I noticed that it was just like, I felt a need to give it up. I felt a need to give it up. I think I like saw a dream or something. Um, and it was like a wake-up call, but I knew I knew instinctually that this wasn't right like that, that I shouldn't listen to music and The day that I gave it up It was cold turkey actually it was I didn't even like you know how people tell you to like Slowly give it up like smoking. They don't say slowly They, they don't say immediately quit smoking. They say like have less cigars a day yeah, it was nothing like that. I just immediately quit. And there was a high that I got off of that, obviously. Like, when you, whenever you make a change, as I was going to say, 
it's all there's always a high that comes with it of like oh i'm gonna be a new person now i'm gonna be different i'm gonna change everyone i'm gonna make everyone the same as me because i want everyone to change and become better turns out that's not the case you can't like force people to be better than you, you kind of have to go through that journey alone and i think that's one of the hardest things um having given up music is like i was kind of alone in it you know i did find a, a person or two people that i could resonate with that were going through the same thing as i was but it really felt like i was going through it alone and i had to remind myself like i'm not giving this up for nothing i'm giving this up for the sake of allah like i'm giving this up because i know that like one day i'm gonna see the reward from what i did like i'm gonna see i'm gonna see the mountain of good deeds after having given up something that was as trivial as music wow my eyes are really watery i get really emotional talking about this because like despite music being so trivial it was a very integral part of my life especially my childhood like my dad was a big music person and we would listen to music a lot growing up so to me music is like it was one of my escapes it was a form of escapism and i think whenever there is a form of escapism it's really scary you kind of have to assess it you know in your day-to-day -day life what is your form of escapism like what do you see yourself turning to to kind of try and blur all the noise out you know of your life i'm not saying necessarily it's a bad thing but i'm, I'm saying that it could have bad repercussions because running away from your life like you have things to do you can't just run away from it because what you're doing is you're kind of like covering those problems with cloth you're not solving those problems you're covering them and they're you know gaining dust over time but the problems are still there like they're the problems aren't gonna go away if you ignore them the problem is gonna go away if you actually face it and come up with a solution and the solution is not always pretty the solution is almost never like a win-win situation the solution is almost always going to end up in a painful state you're going to end up in a painful state you're gonna have to compromise something you're gonna have to give something up that you don't want to give up um and when i say giving something up for the sake of allah you know i'm using music as an example that was the thing that i went through but like you know there's so many things that i could think of off the top of my head that people could give up for the sake of allah so like i know a lot of muslims that do drugs <laughs> i don't know a lot of muslims that do drugs but like i know muslims who do drugs you know that those people exist i know muslims and have on relationships i know muslims that are gaining money from not halal resources i know muslims there's just so many examples i can't like i can't say them all but like there's so many things that i know giving up would be hard but it would be worth it you know and i said something about this topic in my instagram post talking about this subject of giving something up for the sake of allah of like are you chasing pleasure or are you chasing peace now when i refer to pleasure I was referring mostly to, um, you know, bodily pleasure. So like drugs, food, music, I don't know, no, no. you know the word, you know the three lettered word that starts with S, I'm not gonna talk about that. Um, but yeah, no, those things that give you bodily pleasure, right? Those, thing, those things that um, stimulate you f uh, physically. That's, those are the kinds of pleasure, pleasures that I was talking about. Most people like, you know, uh, accidentally most people regarded it as like uh oxygen or air and uh, you know rightfully so i don't blame them but yeah i was talking about those pleasures and i was talking about how attaining peace in life attaining peace in life you can only do that by giving up pleasure and it's not like giving up all kinds of pleasure right that's not humanly possible i don't think like it, even if we're gonna talk about monks like that's just not a i don't think that's a healthy way to live right 
I'm talking about like halal pleasures are fine, but I'm talking mostly about the haram pleasures, the pleasures that we know that we aren't supposed to indulge in, right? The haram relationship, the music, excess food, even drugs, everything, all of that stuff. It, I'm not coming really from a moral perspective anymore. I'm not even coming from an Islamic perspective at this point. I'm just saying that those things really mess with your peace. Those things, like if you want to get depressed, turn to the, turn to those things. Like I don't know what else to say. Those things are like a prescription for depression. <laughs> That's honest to God. Like I don't ever see those things and peace within the same person. Like I've never seen a pers a peaceful person, a person that I personally want to be more like that indulges in those kinds of things. And I say indulges, I'm not saying like, you know, feels once in a time, but I'm, I'm saying indulges like heavily, excessively. Because this peace that we have, I think we have it from when we're born, this kind of intrinsic peace, you know, within all of us. And I think that that peace slowly goes away the more that we're exposed to this world and because this world is like filled with so many kinds of things like I don't even there's just so much there's so much disaster going on there's so much wrongdoing going on there's so many um there's so many different ways that people are starting to decay I'm not even joking I will use the word decay and I will use it intentionally but we're finding so many different ways to escape we're finding so many different ways to live just for pleasure and not for peace. And those things slowly start to cripple into you, right? They, they, they st slowly start to seep into your brain, even from like, as a little child, you're exposed to all of these things, all of these nasty things that we've developed as a human society, unfortunately, right? And as you're exposed progressively over time, you're exposed more and more and more. It's like your peace is almost little to gone. It's little to gone. And then you ask yourself, why am I depressed? Why do I feel empty on the inside? You know, it's, you literally gave up your peace for all of these things. You know, you have to ask yourself, like, what am I doing in my day-to-day -day life? And is the activity that I'm partaking in, is that thing sucking my peace away from my body? Like, th you, those are the questions that you have to ask. And I think peace, uh, we have the wrong idea of peace because you can't attain peace without giving something up first, you know, and whatever that thing is, I, I don't know if, if something sprung to your head immediately, but I think we know what those things are, you know, the same pleasures that I discussed prior. And you can't attain peace without giving those things up, you know. Of course, I'm talking mostly about the haram things, and not indulging even too much in the halal things because indulging too much becomes a form of escape. And escaping, as I said, will never ever solve any problems. The problems will only get bigger with time. So yeah, it's just something to think about. Um, he, he, he. I don't know where to go from here. I think I'll like share an anecdote of um, when I took my hijab off. Uh, for the first time it was actually um, it was a form of it was I derived pleasure from that it, and that's as weird as that sounds but when I was looking because I was like I think around 16 17 I took my hijab off in high school and um, I just remember taking it off and thinking that like I'll be happier oh that's yeah that's what I wanted to talk about I wanted to talk about happiness yeah, so I took it off and I thought I it would make me happy. Um, and when I took it off, it's like I took off my peace. You know, it's, I'm not saying the hijab was my peace, but I'm ta I'm saying it as a metaphor. Like when I took my hijab off, it's like almost as if I took my peace off, my sense of peace away from me. I like just, you know, tossed it aside and said that this was gonna make me happy. Putting my peace aside was gonna make me happy. Uh, and when I took my hijab off, I faced 
just so many waves of emotions. I don't think I've experienced as much chaos as I did in that time of my life. And granted, I was just 17, I mean 16, 17, but you know, still, like our, our brains are kind of developing at that stage and we're not dumb, we know what's going on. But I feel like tra kind of transferring um, from a state of being a, a, a decently good Muslim, I would say, a Muslim that held on to the hijab, a Muslim that prayed, a Muslim that read the Quran, and so, you know, just all these amazing traits of Muslims that you know you see in your day to day life. Transferring from that kind of person to you know, a person with no hijab, a person with little to no focus in their salah, a person to, well, I don't even know. Like, I didn't even have any hobbies at that time. All I cared about was impressing people, and all I cared about was being pretty. And that sucked a lot of peace out of me. It almost made me brain dead because of how much peace I lost throughout that process. And it made me realize why so many people, why so many kids especially, are depressed. I'm not saying seek religion, right? But I'm saying you need to understand the difference between pleasure and peace. That's, I'm genuinely, that's all I'm referring to is trying to seek pleasure is literally, as I said, a prescription for depression because it's true and you know it's true anyway yeah so I saw slowly the peace being sucked out of my life and slowly I saw that my face was actually changing it wasn't like the features stayed the same but my, my expressions my um, kind of my reactions the way I spoke the way I looked they were all just changing and changing in a negative light they were changing where, and to the point where like I stopped smiling as much. And most of the time I cared about how I looked. So I tried to be, I tried to have as much of a poker face as possible. And it was really tough, you know, trying to fit in in that way, trying to like be likable in that way. But the ironic thing is it made me the most unapproachable person ever. So that was, <laughs> Kind of like mission failed successfully, you know? Um, but yeah, it was hard to live up to that kind of standard and hard to please everyone. And it was, it was just, it felt like I was selling my soul and my peace. And hence, I got really depressed. Um, thankfully, nothing to the point where I felt like, you know, unaliving, alhamdulillah. I feel like I've always been protected from that, alhamdulillah. I always say alhamdulillah because it's like, thanks be to God, alhamdulillah, because I know a lot of people that thought about that. And, you know, that is a sensitive topic. That is a sensitive issue. And it's something not to be taken lightly. It could be joked about, but it's not to be taken lightly in any way. Um, but yeah, so when you give something up for the sake of Allah, I think in essence, it's like giving up this dunya. You know, there's actually this beautiful story about the Prophet ﷺ when Umar came uh, into the masjid where the Prophet was uh, laying down on a straw mat. Uh, and Umar got so angry. He got so angry looking at the Prophet because it was the Prophet ﷺ laying on a straw mat. like. He is like the greatest of greats, and he's like laying on the floor to rest. And you know, straw mats are actually a very hard material to lay on. Like, they will print on your back, and they'll kind of like make your back red. And Umar got so angry. He was like, I don't remember the exact narration, but like I remember, you know, the idea of it. And Umar got mad and said, like, you're the prophet. Why are you sleeping on this mat? Like, look at the emperors and, and look at all of these, like, rulers from, from, like, Rome and Persia and all of these big places. Like, they're sitting on thrones. They're sitting on gold. And you're here laying on a straw mat 
you know, he got so angry, Umar and Rasul got angry in return, which is, you know, it says something because the Prophet doesn't get angry very much. Um, but he got very angry, وسلم, and he said um, something along the lines of, they have this dunya, but we have this akhirah. Like, they, this dunya is for them, but for us, we have the hereafter. Like, for us, we have... Oh my God, that's so beautiful. I actually can't, bro. Oh my God, I'm actually crying. But yeah, he's like, we have the hereafter, you know? And that's a big deal. That's a big deal. So when I say giving something up for the sake of Allah, that's the mentality that I'm coming from. Because like, we're not supposed to have this dunya anyway. Like this dunya is not for us. This dunya is like, this dunya is meant to be for people who cherish this dunya. And we're not those people. Muslims are not that. Muslims are, are people who believe in the hereafter. And they know for a fact, they know it like they know their own name, that they're going to get rewarded on the day of judgment. And they're going to get rewarded in the hereafter. And they're going to see their pile of good deeds right in front of them. And they know that for a fact, you know. And we can only pray that it gets to that degree. We can only pray that we do have a pile of good deeds in front of us on the day of judgment, inshallah. But that's the mentality that I like really want to infuse within Muslims, especially the Muslim youth, because I feel like the Muslim youth can get so, um, they can get so easily manipulated because uh, they're so, I don't know, that you could just, they're very impressionable, especially in terms of fashion, you know? Um, I talk about fashion a lot. Well, like when I talk about society and culture in general, I do refer to fashion a lot, especially with girls, because I'm a girl, you know? I don't really know what affects the, the, the Muslim boys, you know? Especially the youth. I don't really know what their biggest weakness is, but I do know what the biggest weakness is within our girls. And it's mostly what I see nowadays is fashion, you know, and how we want to be on top of trends and how we want to look good all the time and how we feel like our beauty needs to be shown. Like, we feel all of these pressures and it's not even pressures, it's desire, right? Like, it's desire. We feel like we want to show it off. We want to show it off because it gives us a dopamine release and like, I understand that. It's human biology and chemistry. But that's what giving up something for the sake of Allah means, right? It's kind of fighting your own chemistry sometimes and actually islam isn't all the way about that islam mostly you know is is parallel with the human um with the human soul we call it the fitra for uh, is like this instinct within a human being Islam is actually kind of parallel to that, you know. Islam doesn't necessarily go against anything that's deep rooted biologically within us. Islam only kind of goes to prevent all of these desires, you know, from breaking out and and having all of this control over us. And um, you know, that's needed because because if Islam wasn't there to do that, you know, corruption would come about and everything would go haywire and, you know, just desires on top of desires never yields anything that's beneficial, let's be honest, never yields anything that's productive. Um, what makes a strong human being, what makes a very tough mind is the mind that goes against its, its you know, desires, is the mind that knows what's best and kind of, I don't know, what's the word? <laughs> and kind of like stays away from what feels good, right? So they know what's good and they stay away from what feels good. Cause those are two very different things. What feels good is probably not good. So like eating a bunch of junk food, that feels very good, man. Have you guys ever had like, um, what's it called? The, the Cheeto puffs? 
That stuff is so good. <laughs> anyway, yeah, eating a bunch of that feels good. Of course, in the moment, not in the repercussions of that event. Uh, but what, what, what is good, right, is exercising. It's going uh, to get your heart pumping five days a week. That's what's good. It might not feel good. And let me tell you, I took up running recently. I'm taking up running because my VO2 max is terrible. And it's like, it doesn't feel good. It hurts actually, but like good pain, not bad pain. But that's what I'm trying to drive home is like, it's what is good and not feels good. So you have to be able to differentiate between those two things. And hmm, I lost my train of thought, that's great. I actually don't know how I kept up with like this whole video. Oh, we're at 28 minutes right now. That's lovely. Um, I think I wanna cap it here. I wanna make my first episode a little bit shorter so I can gauge the audience, gauge the performance and see how I can do my next episode. Because as you can tell from this episode, I love talking. I love talking, I love crying in front of the camera and sharing it with the world for everyone to see me in my sweaty red tears, actually. So, I'm gonna cap it off here. It was lovely talking to you guys. I hope you have a wonderful day. I'm sorry for having abused you being in your ear or you're probably watching me. I made a video for him just in case anyone is like a visual person because I know I am. Um, and yeah, I hope you have a lovely day. Bye-bye.